Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for showing up today. Um, so before we start, we have a few announcements. Um, we have a few different competitions coming up. Uh, we have a mock that's going to be student created on the 29th. So that's going to be during the DefSec time slot next week um, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then we also have one that's created by Cody, Dr. Wellu. Um, and that's going to be on April 9th from noon to 6 p.m. Uh, yeah, so uh, you should come to those and sign up. Free food. Yeah, supposedly we'll have food. Um, okay. Cody's is going to be really interesting uh, because assuming that we can get more teams to sign up, um, then we'll have a fun hardware aspect to that. So, well, actually, we'll have a fun hardware aspect regardless of how many teams sign up because the CCDC team needs to practice using not our own laptops. But regardless, fun stuff. Uh, so sign up. And yeah. Anyways, on to failed ban. So, what is failed ban? Failed ban is a program that's used for like brute force protection. It monitors logs and then can like ban stuff. It does actions based on on events in the logs. I mean, it's super modular and customizable. So, <clears throat> why might we need this? Well. Um, if you have an environment that needs password authentication, or even one that doesn't, um, and you want to ban people who are trying to brute force passwords or just otherwise have malicious looking traffic or activity, uh, then failed ban would be really nice because you can uh, ban them from that. Um, and <clears throat> if you're in a like many user environment, so lots of users need their passwords to log in because it's a little bit more difficult to do SSH keys with a bunch of users, um, then yeah, failed ban, super useful. Also CCDC. Um, failed ban can stall red team a little bit. They do have effectively unlimited IPs, but um, can s at least slow them down a bit. And also there's normally an inject in competitions for failed ban. Also, fail, ban fail to ban, since it's so modular, can be used for software that does not have some sort of built-in auto banning system. So you could even like you know slap it onto Nginx or Apache so that you automatically ban malicious looking and repeat requests. Um, yeah, so it's probably a good idea for pretty much any public facing server. So how does that work? Um, it monitors logs, watching the logs for new events. Um, it uses filters to find <clears throat> events in those logs, so basically a regex filter, regular expression. Um, and then it executes actions when enough of the events are found. So it will like go through and count up, and then when it hits enough events for a certain IP, then it will do something. So normally that's used to ban IPs, but you could do it for all sorts of other stuff. For example, you could have like a notification if you know there's more than 400 accesses on a website or something like that. <clears throat> but importantly, it will not block the first attempt. So you can see in this nice picture, um, we have Mr. Bad Guy, and wait, where's my laser? Laser. There we go. So we have Mr. Bad Guy over here. Um, so our legitimate user, uh, he can just authenticate with whatever his password is. But when our malicious user tries to authenticate, they're like brute forcing something. So AAA doesn't work. AAB doesn't work. AAC doesn't work. And then fail to ban comes in and goes, hey, I've noticed three invalid logons. Let's ban them. And then everything beyond that gets rejected before it gets to the surface. Any questions? What does the guy in the bottom right corner represent? Um, well, what's it look like? It is a penguin in riot gear. The, uh, this, is a, this is a question, it's a two-parter. Uh, will it, so it won't block the first attempt. Will it block the second attempt, or can you control how many you attempts it takes? So it, it, it's pretty much never going to block the first anything. It can block after the first thing because it needs to wait until the entry shows up in the log to actually do anything about it. So it can block after the first entry and starting from the first entry, but it can't actually block the first entry because that would be like blocking something before it's in the log. What if it fails to ban? Thank you for your question. <laughs> Moving on. All right, so. Um, and then another thing, so normally how fail to ban bans IPs is it uses IP tables. 
which you might have heard of before. That's the firewall for Linux. And um, it will just add a rule that will drop traffic from that IP address to whatever port the service is on by default. Or you could set it to like drop any traffic from that IP address. So yeah. So config. So there's one main config file, jl.conf. And it's really big. Um, it has a lot of lines, uh, lots of words. Um, most of it doesn't apply to any given system. There's like a, something in there for a CSGO server, I think. There's like a bunch of random stuff that you're probably not running. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe you're running a CSGO server. And if you are, congratulations. Um, yeah, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of different example configs in there. I'm going to open that up now on definitely not my production server. So we can see in here a bunch of different things. Nano.save.1. Awesome. Anyways, um, yeah, so we can, if we edit jail.conf, maybe make that a little bit smaller. So really big file. This is just setting up all of the defaults. So at the top it yells at you to not do stuff, but you can see in here um, it's setting up tons of options, and a lot of these aren't common. I mean, most of it's comments, but a lot of these aren't common, so this is just setting up the defaults. So in order to actually configure failed event, you shouldn't change stuff in jl.conf. That's just like an example config and the defaults. What you should do is jl.local. So you copy jl.conf to jl.local or you know, make a new file. And that's where you put the actual system-specific config values. Um, there's a few reasons for this. One is that during an upgrade, jail.conf will just get overwritten. Well, won't 100% get overwritten, but a new jail.conf will be made. And you don't really want to update like your local changes, but it would be nice to update you know, the machine-wide changes. Maybe you know, something changes specific to a certain like IP tables or something changes. <clears throat> you don't want to have to go like remember to patch that little thing in your config file, and it can just load in a whole new config file with the right everything. So just a few basic notation things. Um, stuff in brackets is headings or section headers. Uh, stuff starting with a number sign is a comment. And then there's some key equals some value. And if there's multiple values, then they'll be on separate lines. All of these keys are just setting like variables in the config. A few of them, um, a few of them are also used later. So you can see like right here, we set the action underscore variable. And then down here on this line, we use that action underscore variable. So kind of a cool thing. Another interesting thing about this config file is that all of these, um, like where one variable is using another variable, all of those references aren't resolved until like it's actually banning something. Which means that if you change one of these later, and I'll get onto how you can do that, then like if you change, for example, the action, if you change something in this action, then action underscore MW doesn't need to be like reset to reference action. It's already referencing it, so it'll just resolve it at runtime. Um, that was a little complicated, and we'll get into that in a sec. Uh, yeah, so let's see. In this one, jail.local. So right here, I have, you know, not a lot of stuff in here. Oh, there's, there we go, a few more lines. So, <clears throat> so, okay, under the first section, the default section, we have some pretty obvious things, like ignore IP. You probably don't want to, like, you know, ban local hosts or something like that. Bad idea. In this case, I also whitelisted 138247 because I assume that DSU people aren't going to try to hack me. Not looking at anyone in particular, but I would be looking at Austin if he was here. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I assume that it's probably safe and I'm going to you know, get banned if I don't add that in there because I do a lot of dev from school. However, um, I still have a password, so uh, good luck. <clears throat> I could also just as easily you know, remove that and then I could potentially ban myself. It would be great. So there's a few other things like ban time. So, you know, obvious how long it's banned. Find time, though, is how far back in the config it looks. Max retry is how many 
items it takes before it actually triggers an action. So it'll look through the config for the past hour until it hits two times. <clears throat> um, and then the other important stuff down here is ban action. So this is what the actual action, like what's actually going to happen. And currently it's just like the default is IP tables dash multiport. Um, but you could also have it be like IP tables all ports, so it bans every port instead of just whatever ports are associated with the service. Um, right here you can see that I also added, um, so it does whatever the ban is, but then I also added a Discord action. So this is a custom action I made, and I'll go over how to set those up later, that posts a Discord message. So I get on my, ser on my Discord server a notification that's like, hey, someone was banned. Um, it's really spammy, but also kind of cool. Let's see. Here is the actual jail config. So right here, you can see we have an SSH jail. So it's set up. The jail name is sshd. We have to enable it, so enabled equals true. Um, we're setting the port to be ssh. So that's, you know, ssh. This port is specifically for IP tables. So this is, so this is an instance of um, setting that port dynamically where then in the IP, IP tables action, it sees, like it looks up what the port is, and then you can set that port here. So like for a different service, for Nginx, um, I set the port to HTTP and HTTPS. Um, log path, this is where fail to actually looks for a log. So you can see in Nginx, I actually customized that. So it's var log Nginx and f2b.log because I made a separate log for fail to ban that has only the information I need to look through um, for fail to ban instead of all of the information that the default Nginx log has. Then recitative, recitative is an interesting one because unlike the rest of these, or the rest of the jails and the rest of the jails configured in config or in jail.conf, recitative actually looks at the fail to ban logs. So this will ban repeat offenders. So if you get banned from SSH and then get unbanned you know, an hour later, and then get banned again and keep doing that, eventually you'll probably hit this. And then this is intended for like a longer term ban. I have it for a year. You might not want it for a year. Uh, yeah. But <clears throat> currently, since I set up here max retry to two, that applies to all of these jails. So if there's two failed logins on SSH, it bans you. And then recitative, if you have two bans on fail to ban, then it just bans you again for a year. So fun, fun stuff. Any questions? Awesome. Um, yeah, OK, filters. So how does it know when I just put like SSH in bracket or SSHD in brackets, how does it know what to look for? How does it know what to do? Well, that's filters. So in this directory, we have filter.d. And if we go to filter.d, you can see there's a bunch of different filters pre-configured. So you might see some interesting things like that Counter-Strike I mentioned, or there's a bunch of Apache ones, or I don't know, what else? Dovecot, Nginx, a bunch of different ones in here. But we are going to be interested in Let's look at the SSH one. So the SSH one is way overcomplicated. It's like 400 lines of, okay, maybe not 400, like 40 lines of really complicated stuff. But this is the majority of it. And you can see it's looking, so these are all regular expressions. And they're looking for like user not known to underlying authentication module or, you know, failed, failed something for some user or refused connection from host. And there's a bunch of different messages because there's you know a bunch of different ways that SSH might complain about a user being bad. So it has to incorporate all of them. <clears throat> uh, so if you don't know anything about reg regex, here's a quick rundown. So we have like start a line, end a line, any character. Those are really standard. So you can see right here, most of these start with a start of line. And then, like here, since this is a capital S, normal backslash S is just any white space. 
capital backslash s means not backslash s, so that's like anything that's not white space. So this is like one or more characters that are not white space. Um, right here, dot star, that match anything. So yeah, these are kind of difficult to write um, because you have to know exactly how the log is going to be formatted. Granted, log formats don't really change very often, but you still need to know exactly how it's formatted, and then if you miss like one character in there, um, you potentially missed a bunch of detection. So I actually set up one. What did I call it? One. I don't actually see it here. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. We'll look at that later. Anyways, so actions. So this is what actually happens when uh, the when something gets detected. So in here, you can see we don't actually specify an action on any of these because we have the actions, the default action specified up here. Up here, the default action which here's some of that dereferencing stuff, is action underscore, and action underscore is the ban action, default ban action, which we can see right here is IP tables multiport. And then it's also the discord action, which is my custom action. Now, if we go to action.d, we have a bunch of different actions here. So if we look at like um, IP tables, so this is just the base IP tables one. You can see there's a lot more. Um, these don't really look like, they kind of look like IP tables commands, but not really. You can see they're super module, so you can set like, you know, the path for IP tables. And then you set like the specific table name. And you set what the actual ban action, like what the return type is for that. You set the protocol that you're actually banning. So instead of banning all ports, you're banning like just SSH. <clears throat> or uh, actually, sorry, protocol is TCP. There we go. Port is just SSH. So you can see there's also a bunch of actions here. So actions <clears throat> right here. So action start is the first thing that it does to like set up the jail. So this is like right when fail to ban starts, how it sets up the jail. And action stop is of course tearing down the jail because in IP tables you might need to like make a new chain or something like that to set up the jail. Action check is how you check if an IP is banned. So in here you can see it's IP tables tack L chain, so that's listing everything in the chain and then it basically just grabs for it. Um, and then, of course, action ban and unban are to ban and unban someone. So you can see right there. This is the actual command that's ran, well, most of the command that's ran, when you get banned. Cool stuff. Um, and, yeah. Then in init, sometimes there's variables that look like there are in the IP tables one. So another useful tool we have is the fail ban CLI. So if we do fail fail to ban client um, status there. So you can see these are all the jails I have currently configured, which are the same ones we saw in the config. So if we do like status sshd, then these are all the IPs that are currently banned from my server. You might be thinking, huh, that's kind of a lot of IPs. Yeah. This is just past hour people that have tried to log into my server, which is just publicly on the internet somewhere, and failed. So they got banned. Uh, yeah, so that's a little scary, a little spooky. Um, sometimes it's a lot longer than that. If we go into here, I actually have daily recaps sent to me. So right here, failed ban summary. So if we scroll up in here, we can see like, you know, yesterday, 343 bans. That's kind of a lot. That's, that's, that's really a lot. Some days, um, I don't see any too high, but some days I'll have as little as like 24, which, you know, maybe my server was off or something that day. Uh, some days I'll have 500 to 1,000. So, yeah, fun stuff. Anyways, um, let's go back to here. 
And this is a channel I set up. So this is that Discord action I was talking about. It uh, live sends me a message. So you can see these messages. So we got two bands in the past minute. Right. Uh, that, that's kind of kind of a lot. Um, I would offer that anyone can try it, but I'm currently uh, whitelisting DSU's IP space so that I don't ban myself. Um, yeah. Smiley face. Oh, look at that. Someone else just got banned. Um, oh yeah, so also, speaking of banning yourself, uh, what happens when you get banned? Well, you can just unban yourself. Now, that's only useful if you can like still have a shell after you IP ban yourself. So you might have to like log in through a different route, which is why I have my phone and can log in on my phone and then unban myself, which I have had to do many times. Um, yeah, so be a little bit careful when setting this up. And also be careful when remembering your password. So back to filters. That's what I call it. And it's not even going to be on this box. Oh, of course. I didn't put it here. Ah. Well, in the environment in IA Lab, if you actually want to like follow along and uh, play with this at all, um, it's called like DL205, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, you can, if you've signed into Cybernet, then it will have pushed that to you, and you can start that up to play with it. I will log in here. <laughs> Probably should have started this earlier. Everything's fine. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'll go over that in a sec. We can look at custom action. So yeah, so filter, um, it's just that failure AX. Action, it's that action ban. So this is my Discord action. So it's just literally posting to a Discord webhook um, and saying, like, this IP was banned. And IP is a. Um, Variable and so server name, but server name is defined, you know, right here in init, um, and then webhook also a variable. Uh, there is a live webhook in the V app, so if you want to start that and have fun with that, that will go to this channel, which not this channel, this channel. There we go. Which maybe make that a public channel. So uh, yeah, now you can see if you uh, actually ban anything. I don't know if it will work, but hopefully it will. We are going to try to set that up now. So, let's see. Super fast. There we go. All right. Got. So in this VApp, it's just a server, a client, and you have PFSense. Um, password is password one bang, as always. It's probably difficult to see. So first thing to do is apt install fail the ban. I already have it installed. <clears throat> so we can go to Etsy fail the ban. And if we look at, let's see, filter.v, then we have that um, my bad Python service.com. So if we want to edit my bad Python service.com, we can see that's the regex that I had earlier. 
Um, and if we go to connections, just Um, we can see this is the same thing. And look at that, there's a live webhook right there. So if you want to actually enable this, uh, you just have to uncomment that line and comment this one. Please like change the username so that I can see who did it and don't put anything like bad there because that's going to be not fun and then I'll go ban you from the Discord. I'm joking, I won't not do this. Um, or will I? Regardless. Let's actually set this up. So <clears throat> this is Looks like a pretty much fresh install other than those two custom actions I made. So we have that jail.conf there. So we could either copy jail.conf to jail.local or just like make a new jail.local. But that, you know, doesn't have all the nice fun stuff in it. So copy, copy jail.conf to jail.local. Jail.local. And then I'm going to delete a lot of the lines in this. So, <clears throat> so right here, um, same SSH jail. So same SSH jail as um, before. That's just default. So we're going to set enabled equals true. So you have to enable whatever jail you set up. And then we're going to go up here. We're going to set, where is it? Yeah, so currently it's band time 10 minutes. Let's set that to like two minutes. And find time 10 minutes is fine. And max retry, set that down to three so it's just a little bit easier to trigger. And restart, fail to ban. Now we can do fail to ban, fail to ban client. Status. We can see there's one jail set up. And if we do status of SSHD, you can see there's currently nothing failed. No one's banned. But if we now open up new terminal, think that this is 10.10.102.2. Nope. Oh. 100.2. 100.3. Okay, I don't know what my IP is. Perhaps. So if we want to find our IP, you can just open the web browser and log in here. Though in the environment, the IP of the server is going to be dot um, 10, 10.0.0.10. So it looks like it was dot 2. That's a little awkward. Ah, I forgot the at sign. There we go. Password. All right, so now I'm in my server, the SSH. But let's say there's some malicious dude that's trying to log in, right? So they're like failing password, and maybe they failed the password again. Failed the password again, and failed the password again. Can I set it to three? Let's see if this actually works. It was really awkward if it didn't. Five demos. There we go. So now we're getting connection refused when we try to SSH. So I failed three-ish times. We're getting connection refused. So now if we hop on over to oh, hop on over to the VM and look at the status. Now you can see right there, 103102, that's my IP, um, was banned. So yeah, cool stuff. Any questions so far? Awesome. Glad to hear it. Everyone is paying very close attention. Uh, yeah, so now we want to do fail to ban, fail to ban, client, um, set, SSH, unban, 
f2. Now, if we go back here, you can see we can SSH again. That is very hard to see. Wow. There we go. So now I get that password prompt again instead of the uh, connection refuse. Uh, yeah. All right. What else? Oh, yeah. Right. Custom actions. So that one did not send a Discord ping. So we got to go enable that. Remove clicks. Um, so if we edit that jail.local and go down to, normally I clean up all of this, but just for easy demo and not having to go back and forth too much. Oh, there we go. There's the SSH jail. Right here, um, you can see there's no specific action specified. So that means it's using this action right here, which uh, here again is using this action, which is just that default ban action, the IP tables single port, um, which, uh, quick, Quick note, if we do IP tables dash save to print everything, you can see right here we have that SSHD jail, and you can see that this, oh no, no, okay. Whoever is on 10.100.3 is banned. Oh, that's my other box. Ha, fun stuff. So if we wanted to add the Discord action, I probably spelled that wrong. Uh, not necessarily fail. What was the file you just did for the Discord? Um, that's jail.local. So jail.local under way down here. Under the SSH D jail. Or not the SSH D jail, under the action. Huh. I normally set specific actions under the jail that I want them to have. Right there. Ha. Huh. Action. Just go over. So you just add scored. And assuming that I spelled everything right, I didn't mess up my syntax on that. Now, Did we get a Discord message? We did not get a Discord message. I probably messed up something. Oh, right. Haha. <laughs> I completely forgot the parameters. Anyways, don't mind me. I know what I'm doing. Who gave me the name? So, name equals. I don't think I have band time set up. We'll set it as anyways. Actually, no, band time is already set. Ha. So let's get band again. Maybe. Ah, there we go. Look at that. So I'll explain why that's mad in a sec, but you can see we got successful band. <laughs> Live demo kind of worked. That's it. So you might notice in there it was like yelling at you about address not found. That's because I have a uh, geolocation or GUIP location lookup. Um, yeah, so that's fun. Um, and then that custom filter. So. I have a service on the IOLAP box. If we go to right here in um, home DSU, we have 
my bad Python service.py. Um, and that's just spans random log messages into this log. So if we run that for a few seconds and cat my bad Python service.log, you can see it just has a bunch of like user failed login, user failed login, a bunch of random garbage like that. So if we go into fail to ban now, we can make a custom J. So jump here. So let's make a custom jail for this. I think I have the full custom jail. Here we go. So we basically need to just copy all of that. Or not all of it, but most of it. Why does my computer not like switching windows? Okay, so it's my bad Python service. I realized I probably should have made a shorter name. Whatever. So you have to enable it. True will equals true. Um, it uses this name to look up that um, filter, so it has to be the correct spelling on that. I probably spelled it wrong, but whatever. Um, ban time, really doesn't matter what we put here. You could put like an hour, or you could just leave that out and you would use whatever your default time is. Um, let's do max re retry. Let's set this to like 10, maybe this is a service where for whatever reason, people type their passwords wrong a lot. Now we can specify a custom action for this service, which is good if you have something specific. But since we added that Discord action to the global service, it's fine. Log path. Set. So, hopefully, assuming I spelled everything right there, that should load. We start that. Fail to ban client status SSHD. Uh, nope, not a SSH key. Wow. Building client status. You can see there's my bad Python service there. So if we now run uh, one three my bad Python service. So now we're running that. So it's generating um. So tail tack f will follow um, any changes made to a file so you can see we're getting like, oh look, lots of malicious looking login attempts from a bunch of IPs. So if we do status my bad Python service, oh, uh oh, I messed something. Fun, now we get to do some live debugging. Interesting. Well, I'm not sure why this is working. That looks right. So a few more nice commands to help debug. Um, fail so you can do fail ban client git name of your jail. So my bad Python service. Really should have picked a shorter name. And then something like actions. All right, so that's the problem. Something with. Oh, 
потом вызвать это. I'm not sure what that is, but looks like I messed up the action on that somehow. Right, maybe it needs to be specified on this thing. Ah, that's Interesting. I'm not sure why this is not working. As with most of my live demos. Well, I'm not sure why that's not working exactly, but we can quickly demo that at least the regex works. So failed band regex is something useful to test um, why a filter is not working. So you specify the path of the log and then the regex that you're testing against it or the ser service filter. So we can do home DSC my bad python service dot log and then See, fill the band, filter, my bad, Python service You can see right here that we got a bunch of hits on that failed login from host. And actually, we don't need to count again. So you can see in this file, there's like a lot of failed whatever. So right here in the outputs, which is in this output, you can see right there, we have like 2,000 something hits on it. So that's kind of cool. Still not sure why this service isn't working. I probably spelled something wrong when I added the service file. Anyways. So is custom jail, uh, like conceptually, it's an action that is going to happen that you specify if there's uh, a certain like type of, can you, can you explain the concept of custom jail? Yeah, so it, you have, So by default, there's uh, like a bunch of jails configured, like the SSH one. Um, but if you had like a new service or something, or just want to like further customize one of your jails, then um, you can just add like a new section like this. So it's the header to specify which jail it is. This header specifies which file to look up, like which file in that filters directory has the filter regex in it. And then um, whatever parameters you want to set for a specific jail. So if we go down here, you can see for like, I don't know, Bitwarden. The ports that would be banned are HTTP and HTTPS. And that's the log path. And then it uses the Bitwarden filter. Or there's CSGO, because whatever. Like those are graph on ports that it would ban, and like what the action specifically is. Since you know, since this one bans UDP ports and not just TCP ports, um, it has a custom action where it has both of those ban actions. Um, let's look at a different. 
I don't know. Yeah, so a bunch of different custom things or like different directories. Like here it's LDAF. Or I don't know. Whatever service this is, HTTP. Okay. That makes sense. That answer your question? Yeah. I'm not sure why. Oh, did I? Huh. I probably. Yep, that's what I did. I already made a service. Um, well, that's awkward. So, don't mind what I did in there. Fun thing, um, you can also put stuff into jail.d, so you can have like a specific file for each service, and that's what I did before as setup. So we can see in here there's the mybadpythonservice.com. That's why it wasn't working. So if we edit this, we have to look that to true. So same thing, but this allows you to like separate it out, or maybe when you install a service that's some non-standard service that's not already in failedban, and they want to have an option for you to put failedban on it, and they could like put a file in jail.d. Let's hope this works now. It would be really awkward if it still didn't work after I switched to my example code instead of, oh, uh -oh. Maybe. That is, really does not like me. That's fun. I don't know why that's broken. I probably spelled something wrong somewhere. So, yeah. Cool. I don't want to debug that for another hour. Anyways, questions? No? Awesome. That's all I have.